Hello there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now hopefully you had a chance to watch my video on power over ethernet. At the end of that video, I promised I would make a video about two ways that you can power the Raspberry Pi using power over the ethernet. So if you wanna find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so the two ways we're gonna be powering our Raspberry Pi, one is using a hat hardware attached on top. It's a PoE hat that allows you just to plug in the ethernet with the power on it and the Raspberry Pi powers up. And the other way is using a PoE splitter. Okay, let's start with the hat. Now there are two types of PoE hats for the Raspberry Pi, officially from the Raspberry Pi Foundation. One is a standard PoE hat, so that using the first original PoE standard. And then there is a PoE plus one. And the main difference between the two, other than design changes, of course, as they've made along the way, is that the PoE plus one can deliver more power. In fact, you can get up to five volts and four amps. The original one is five volts and 2.5 amps. Now to use the PoE hat on your Raspberry Pi is simplicity itself. You need to have a Raspberry Pi Model 3B Plus or a Raspberry Pi 4. And the reason is those models include four extra pins which are used by the hat to use that power supply. And it's really, really easy to tell whether your board supports it. You just look, if it's got those extra four pins on it, then you're all good to go. Very simple to install it, you just add it on top, connects over the GPIO pins, connects over those four pins. There's some little legs with screws to go in to make it all fit very nicely together. And that's it, you're all set to go. You just plug in the ethernet with the power on it and your Raspberry Pi will boot up. Now I'm using the PoE Plus version, which means if you use it with a PoE Plus uh, injector at the other end or a PoE Plus switch, then you're gonna get up to five volts and four amps. And of course, don't forget, you can use up to 1.2 amps of those across the four uh, different uh, USB ports. Now, actually, it's rated at 20 watts, which is that four times five, but you can actually get about 25 watts out of it. So there is some extra power on the five volt rails on the Raspberry Pi itself, which you could tap into if you really, really wanted to. Now, there are two main disadvantages of the PoE hat. The first is that the GPIO pins are no longer available. And that's really a shame because I was thinking in my mind, if I wanted to use power over ethernet, the best place was I wanted to reach somewhere remotely with just the ethernet cable without having to run a mains cable there as well. And of course that would be useful for things like sensors or remote cameras or for you know animal wildlife tracking or all kind of ideas that you might want to use your Raspberry Pi for at a distance. And of course the fact is at a distance means you're probably connecting some other things to it via the GPIO pins, measuring humidity and temperature and so on, but they're not available. Now there are hacks of course, because there is a tiny little section of the GPIO pins available. You could solder on some wires there, you could solder on some other kind of stuff. So that was possible, but it's not a neat solution, which really is a shame. And the second problem is that it does contain a fan, which is great, especially with the Raspberry Pi 4, that helps with the cooling. However, that fan can be a bit noisy. So that's something just to watch out for if you're using it, for example, in your home office. Now, the second way is to use a PoE splitter. So you remember we talked about PoE injectors, way of getting current in to the ethernet cable. And now when it comes to the other end, you can split it out again. So if you look at a PoE uh, uh, splitter, you've got the ethernet cable goes in at this end, which actually has the power and the data. Then that splits into power, uh, power and data. So two separate things. And there's now no longer power on this ethernet cable. All the power is now coming out through here. And this is one with a micro USB B connector on it. You can also get them with USB-C. And of course, as you can imagine, if you've now got a USB connector and an ethernet connector, you just put the ethernet connector into the Raspberry Pi and you put in the power connector into the USB slot. So here I am using on a Raspberry Pi Model 3 and you can see that it's able to power that up no problem. Again, watch the power requirements because this is PoE, not PoE Plus, then actually this one is rated at five volts and 2.4 amps. That means it will boot a Raspberry Pi 4 without any problem, but be careful about loading up those USB ports. Okay, before we close, why would you want to use them? As I said in my previous video, when you want to get your Raspberry Pi somewhere remote and you haven't got power, but you can run an ethernet cable there, then that is an ideal solution. Uh, somebody wrote in one of the comments, why are you doing that when your power supply is only like three meters away? Of course, the point is you can run an ethernet cable up to 100 meters with power and data on it, which means you can get it right up into a remote place uh, and actually then use your Raspberry Pi there without having to run uh, mains electricity to there as well. 
Okay, that's about it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more Raspberry Pi videos, let me know in the comments below about any topics you particularly want to look at. Also, don't forget I have a Twitter account at Gary Explains. I hope you're following me there. And don't forget my newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter, and I think you'll enjoy it. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.